Welcome, I am Terry Tropin, and today I'll be, I will discuss changes to the ICD-10 PCS for 2025. These are, are the changes other than the ones for the circulatory system. These are discussed in a different video. Remember that the 2025 changes are effective October 1, 2024. So coming up, let me start with information about myself. I have a master's in healthcare administration informatics from the University of Maryland Global Campus and have RHIA and CCSP certifications. I also taught at Montgomery College as an adjunct professor in the Silver Spring Tacoma Park campus. And I am an author. Here are the books that I wrote. These are updated every year. I have these guidelines uh, already, obviously, the uh, PCS guidelines. That book should be up hopefully in August. I have it out to my reviewers now. These guidelines, I don't have the changes yet. I hope to get that up soon. And um, the e E&M coding guidelines won't be up until, won't be available till the fall for 2025. So that'll probably be up in um, mm, September, October, maybe November, hard to say. And then I also have this book, which is Changes to CM and PCS, and I, I have that up for 2025 when I have all the information. These books are available on Amazon and updated every year, because there are always changes every year. So this is what I'm gonna talk about um, in this video. These are gonna discuss the major changes for 2025 this is gonna be just the major changes, not every single one. If you wanna see all the changes, there's a link in the description for this video that will take you to see every changes. Now, changes related to the circulatory system were discussed in a previous video, and you can see that one. There will be a link to that at the end of this video. So what am I gonna talk about in this one? Well, the medical and surgical section there are changes to the central nervous and cranial nerves section, lymphatic and hemic section, skin and breast, and then, of course, in the new technology section, um, there's always lots of changes in that one, skin subcutaneous, fascia and breast, joints, introduction, transfusion, and measurement. So these are the ones I'm going to talk about. So luckily, yay, no changes made to the ICD-10 PCS official guidelines. So that, at least, we don't have to worry about for this year. So I would suggest you get out your ICD-10 PCS 2024 book to follow along because I'll refer to the tables and you can see where it is changed as we go along. So let's start with table 005 in the medical and surgical section. This is central nervous system and cranial nerves. You can see this is destruction and you can see there is a new qualifier value. This was my favorite word for the new um, 2025 stereo, electroencephalographic, radio frequency ablation. Okay, and this is indestructive, new qualifier value. So what the heck does that mean? Well, this is a procedure used to destroy the brain and nervous tissue by temperature control, stereo, electroencephalographic, radio frequency ablation. Ablation, of course, means destruction. So it's used to create lesions in patients with drug-resistant epilepsy. Sometimes creating lesions will um, treat the epilepsy. This procedure has been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Note that some of these things we're going to talk about have been approved by the FDA at the time these changes were posted, but some have not. So if it says it has not, then you need to check and make sure that they have been. The expectation is that they will be approved shortly, but they were not at the time that um, these changes were posted. So let's now look at 00K, also in the nervous, uh, central nervous system and cranial nerves, but this one is for MAP, and this is for connectomic analysis. This is in MAP. So what is that? 
Well, this is a brain imaging technique that describes the mapping of the location and direction of white matter bundles and their constituent fibers within the brain. And here's a picture of what that looks like. And this has been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. So let's move on to 071. This is the lymphatic and hemic systems. This is a new table that was added for bypass. There was no bypass table for this system before. So this is bypass. This is to allow for bypass procedures for cases of lymph lymphedema. So this is performed in cases of lymphedema, and you can see here you have lymphedema, which is swelling because of lymph, and you can bypass it to kind of help move out the excess uh, lymph from one vessel to another. So that's new. Okay, also in the medical and surgical section, we have table 0HR, this is replacement skin and breast, and we have a new type of flap, lumbar artery perforator flap, the new qualifier value. So what is that? Well, this is a type of autologous breast reconstruction procedure. It uses skin, soft tissue, and very small blood vessels from the lower back, and you can see that in the picture, as well as blood vessels from the abdomen to create, recreate a breast after a mastectomy. So this is a new type of perforation flap. Okay, so now that's all the non-circulatory system changes in the medical and surgical section. So, as always, there are many changes made to the new technology codes for 2025. Note that the new ones for 2025 use qualifier value A for technology group 10. So, they'll all have um, qualifier value A. So, first we're going to start with Pratimagine Zamal Carousel. Genetically Engineered Autologous Cell Therapy. It's a new device substance technology. This is for skin with replacement procedure. And this is skin in extremities, head, neck, chest, abdomen, and back. Lots of different areas of skin. So what is this? This is, this is very sad. This is... Um, Cell therapy to treat a recessive dystrophic epidermolysis bullosis, an ultra rare, thank goodness, life threatening autosomal recessive form of epidermolysis bullosis. Uh, it causes painful blistering and erosion of the skin, as you can see from the picture. This drug has not yet been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Okay, so now we're also in the new technologies section, we're going to see joints, and this time it's uh, root operation fusion. And this has a new device substance technology, and this is for ankle and tarsal joints. It's internal fixation device, gyroid sheet lattice design. So let's see what that is. It's a series of cages and a variety of shapes and sizes used for fusion, and it provides stabilization of the hind foot and ankle with an intermedullary nail for fixation. Okay, so there's lots of different sizes, so you can really get the one that fits this particular patient best. This has not yet been approved at the time that these changes were posted. Okay, second new technology change involving joints, but this with root operation fusion. So this time it's facet joint fusion device pair titanium cages. And this is for vertebral joints, lumbar and thoracolumbar joints. So paired titanium cages. It's a small, hollow, box-like device made of titanium, a biocompatible metal 
known for its strength and dur durability. The cages are designed to fit between the vertebrae and provide structural support while promoting grown birth, bone growth, used with lower vertebral joints following surgery. Okay, and that's the blue in the picture. This device has not yet been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Okay, so another one in the new technology section for joints, but this one's insertion. So this is Carbon Peak Spinal Stabilization Device Pedicle Based. So let's see what that is. This is used to stabilize the spine following surgery and to treat spinal infections. And this has been approved by the FDA. Okay, as it is true in most years, many changes were made to new technology anatomical reasons introduction table, the XW0. These include a lot of new substances and devices. So we're gonna start with body part value subcutaneous tissue, um, that's a glucagon used to prevent and treat hypoglycemia in pediatric patients with congenital hyperinsulinism. Um, and then comicin, hydrochloride, and topramicin, sulfur anti-infective, temporary irrigation spacer system. Okay, it's so a drug used to treat periprosthetic joint infections, a complication of joint replacement therapy. And then we get to AGNI bone filler, bone void filler. So there's a, a void, an opening in the bone, and this is something that it fills it, fills up the bone. It promotes bone ingrowth, a repair for patients with fractures or bone defects. Now there's a bunch of drugs, and I'm not going to try to pronounce these because they're ridiculous. Um, used. And, but these are listed in body part values, peripheral and central vein. So the first one is made to, is designed to reverse the adverse effects of another drug. The other drug is a great drug, but it, include, it does major bleeding associated with surgery. So you want to reverse that adverse effect of the other drug. The second one treats complications, it's an anti-infective, treats complications of urinary tract infections, including pyelonephritis and other um, conditions. The third one in, uh, is used to treat, it's also an anti-infective, treats challenging infections, ones that are resistant to um, other treatments, um, infections caused by gram-positive bacteria, and it lists several other ones, including MRSA, um, strep, pneumonia, staph, other ones. Okay, and this one is, uh, treats adults with relapsed refractory B cell precursor, precursor, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. This one is, uh, treats follicular lymphoma. This one, uh, Graft versus host disease are death in patients with acute um, leukemias and other conditions. This one, adults with previously treated locally advanced metastatic HER2 positive biliary tract cancer. And this one, non chimeric antigen receptor T cell immune factor cell therapy treats a wide variety of cancers and non cancer diseases such as multiple sclerosis. So, a lot of different ones. And these, may be in the peripheral vein or in the central vein, it depends. And so they're listed in both. Okay, so this one is listed in the peripheral vein only. Um, this drug is used to treat adults with type 1 diabetes who can't, through other treatments, have not enabled them to approach their target um, A1C levels. So also in new technology, this is the transfusion. This is not the introduction. The previous ones were all under introduction. This is transfusion. This is Marnitegrogene autotemsal, okay? Uh, this is transfusion, so let's see what that is. Okay, this is a substance used to treat severe leukocyte adhesion deficiency type one, and extremely, again, it's extremely rare condition 
Pediatric disease caused by mutations in the specific genes. Gene is an immunodeficiency disease and brings frequent infections in soft tissues such as gum, skin, and muscles. So it's used to treat that. Okay, so this is a measurement, also new technology, physiological systems, and here is the new device substance technology, intracranial, cerebrospinal, fluid flow, computer-aided triage, and notification. So this assists in prioritizing non-contrast CT head studies that show possible obstructive hydrocephalic, hydrocephalus. So it looks into, uh, the computer looks into whether or not it's probable that uh, hydrocephalus is, is there, and then they can look at it uh, more, um, get, give another look to see if it is or not with other um, instruments or with a, a physician. So it kind of gives a first look to say, hmm, maybe we should take another look at that one. Okay, so that's the video. That's the non-circulatory um, changes. So again, here are my books, which are current now, and I will update them as I can. This is where to contact me with questions or comments. Here is where you can contact me if you want a copy of these slides. I will send you a PDF of them. My books are updated every year. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.